Hey guys, Canadian Zangief back again, and uh, today we're going to be looking at a video that's going to be has been requested of me almost since I started my channel, like almost a year ago now, and uh, that's going to be my top ten. No, no, nobody requests a top ten video of anything. That's that's just. <laughs> um, it's going to be how I uh, do my custom casing, my universal game cases, and uh, as you can see, um, I'm going to go over where you can get them, how to make the art for them, uh, how do you mod them to fit all cases, what fits in them, we're going to go over it all, and <laughs> let's take a look. Here's the uh, bare bones universal game case, and uh, without the cover on it. So you open it up. It's a clamshell case. It's got, you know, the the sleeve on it, so you can slip in out work, uh, slip in and out artwork. Okay, so it's got these little guides all over in the inside, and uh, it allows you to put in various carts. So. You can fit in uh, a whole different varieties of video game cartridges. Um, works fine for uh, Super Nintendo. Let's see, it fits in nice. Little wiggle room. Super Famicom. You know, same thing. Well, it's generally the same size, so of course. Um, Sega Genesis. There's another little two tabs that fit and hold it in place. So yeah, nice, nice and sturdy there. Well once it's closed. <laughs> uh, N64, same thing. Nice, really nice fit for the N64. You know, very little wiggle room. Um, of course, I'm not collecting for the system anymore, but still. Uh, fits the Tori 2600. A um, little bit loose, but once it's closed, it uh, fits good. Of course, it's the Atari Creep cartridge. Uh, Famicom. Fits in the Genesis tabs, once again like that, really nice. The only problem is when you get to original Nintendo, doesn't fit. So to remedy that, you have to actually cut out this tab, this tab, this tab, and this tab. Uh, there's a couple ways you can do that. You can uh, do it by uh, uh, using a Dremel, which is what I do, or you can use uh, some uh, snips and uh, get it out. But yeah, I like to use the uh, the Dremel. It's just easier. It's a faster job, and uh, yeah, it's easy to clean it up after. So I'll get my tools out and we'll give it a shot. Okay, so the tools that I use, anyways, for the most part, is uh, my Dremel with uh, the cutting tool at the end. Now it's important to note that uh, it doesn't actually cut because it's plastic, it actually melts. So uh, try to be careful, you know, you don't want to get molten plastic on yourself or anything. Um, also, it's not going to uh, do a perfect uh, cut because it's not cutting, it's like melting the tabs free. So as well as using this, um, I use this other little Dremel bit. It's uh, Kind of like a, like a sander almost, so it it uh, will be able to get rid of some of the extra little nubs and everything. And any melted plastic that comes, you know, dripped on anything, I can kind of cut and pick free with some little precision snips. So let's uh, get this off. It's going to be loud, so.
Okay, so we've cut off these pieces right here. These ones are still connected because there's still a piece at the end here that connects it to the base. So the easiest way to cut that free is to take your small snips here and just cut it off like that. There we go. So it's hard to see, but you know, you got a little bit of that burn there. It picks some of it off. You know, but there's still a bit of a ridge here. You know, like, and if you're not too crazy over having it perfect, like sometimes I get lazy and I don't bother cleaning it up too well. Once you get down the majority of them, you know, you can see that there's still quite a ridge there. Even like cut down halfway will be enough that you can snugly fit a nest card in. But if you want it to be perfect, like some guys actually put little foam things along these sides as well. So it's a little bit of a cushion. I don't bother with it. But if you wanted to take those off, the ridges, get in a... That's a super easy tutorial on how to clean up your UGCs, Universal Game Cases. And uh, yeah, we'll go back to the desk and we'll uh, take a look at how you get some of these cases and how to, uh, how to put artwork in them. So the uh, Universal Game Cases, they're, uh, you know, they're very attractive to do and you know, they're very cost effective in the end. Because if you ever have like water damage or anything like that, you know, you're not uh, losing half of your collection value um, by losing all your uh, CID stuff. This way, you know, if you do have some damage, you can just reprint out another cover. Um, al although it is a cost-effective thing, you really have to commit yourself and invest in these because um, you only come in boxes of a hundred. So that, that can be a bit staggering to drop at a time, especially if you're not sure if you want to get involved with Universal Game Cases or not. Um, and that being said, it's uh, not too terrible in the States, I believe. Um, I believe the re most recent price that I've seen it for is about $69 uh, American, $70 American, plus uh, freight. So probably uh, about a buck a case you know that's not bad considering the cost of uh, you know complete in box nowadays uh, however if you're up in Canada it's a little bit more um, where I am of course um, I think it was about uh, $130 a case right now and that's American the exchange rates not that good right now so it's even worse uh, you do get breaks by getting more than one box at a time. So if you have some local friends that are uh, kind of interested in getting into Euro skin cases, you definitely save a ton of money by uh, bundling it up. Um, I, I know I've sold, sold a couple of my friends on it. Unfortunately, you know, I was pretty much done buying by the time uh, everyone was kind of getting wind of what I was doing. Um, uh, I know 64-bit uh, Matthew, you know, he totally embraced it. He's cased his entire N64 collection on it. You know, it just looks beautiful on the wall. And he was able to uh, sell all his boxes and everything and uh, get a lot of money back to further his collection. Um, and uh, Thrift Dweller Nate, you know, he, uh, he jumped in on a bit and did some of his favorite titles. And uh, yeah, he has it on display in his game room. 
Uh, where you actually get it from is uh, thevideoshopper.com. I'll uh, do a little thing on the bottom there. Um, I I've actually have an account through them because for a while there, shipping to Canada was kind of like a special request. This is back when I first started really collecting. And uh, very good customer service. You know, I, I had one of their uh, assistant managers actually talk to me every time I was doing an order and, you know, it was very friendly and, you know, he really wanted the business and he couldn't do enough for me. And, you know, props to them. You don't see that too often nowadays, especially from, uh, you know, like another international, right? Because international, you know, you don't have that much of an onus on customer service. Um, or maybe it's just because I'm from Canada, I don't know, everyone seems to like us. <laughs> um, so yeah, you got your box in, you know, boxes of 100 or whatever. Um, if you have the option to uh, double box it, like it'll cost a little bit more, like about another five bucks or so, and it's worth the money. Gotta think, this is a crate of 100 plastic cases. And uh, it's coming, you know, depending where you live, it's coming a long way. So damage is going to happen. And uh, although they are such a great company, it's not cost effective to send out 10 or whatever uh, cases that may have been slightly damaged. So, you know, shipping, things get damaged, etc. blah, blah, blah. Um, the last time I got a case, uh, I had, I think, like 12 of them that were a little bit cracked. Um, f about four of them were unusable they were so damaged because they were on the corners so I made that mistake and I didn't get the extra boxing um, but they, they ended up giving me a credit on my next order but unfortunately I don't think I need any more but I couldn't fault them because it was coming a long distance Universal Game Cases is probably you know the saving grace of me actually being able to have this collection you know, because it looks so presentable on the wall and like in the game room and everything. Before um, I, I moved into this place uh, with my wife, we lived in a much smaller house, so I had to have my game collection in the common area. And uh, if I couldn't have kept it nice and clean and you know really attractive looking in the the family room like that, uh, I probably wouldn't have been able to get away with uh, collecting as much as I had. Um, that being said, yeah, it's it's definitely if you like having your things beautiful and streamlined, you know, all different consoles, you know, all the same kind of format, so you can have them all on the same kind of bookshelf. You're not jamming things everywhere just to make them fit. You know, I can't handle that kind of mess. <laughs> so the covers themselves, I, I can't take credit for them. Um, the, uh, the other thing that led me on to the Universal Game Cases was finding thecoverproject.net which is a collective of community members that are dedicating themselves towards preserving you know physical media, video games and you know keeping them presentable and beautiful and everything and they're recreating a lot of the artwork of the original games on a new format for the Universal Game Cases. So I was all over that. Um, you have to register, I believe. Um, they've had some problems with registration for a while, but I believe they've cleaned it up now, so it shouldn't have too much of an issue. Um, I have also have all my templates available for download on Mediafire. I'll provide a link at the bottom, but def definitely check out the uh, coverproject.net. Um, they have lots of pre-made covers, like tons and tons and tons by amazingly talented people. Um, all credit goes to them, you know, they, they do this all for free, you know, it's, it's all about community, all about community. So when you have your, uh, your template all together, um, I use Photoshop, makes it a lot easier. You have your extra artwork on it, you maybe even do a custom, you know, cover to it, you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of that. And uh, make it all nice and now it's on your computer, ready to go, best way to print it. Well, you know, if your printer at home, or at least my printer at home, doesn't produce a good enough quality for my liking. So, uh, I, I end up sending mine over to Staples, or, you know, Office Depot, or whatever is available to you, Office Max. And uh, they print it out for you at a decent price. 
Um, there's a few things you have to be very specific when you're doing an order through some kind of place like that. Uh, you have to speci specify that they do not stretch or alter the image in any way, that they do it exact size. All the templates are fit to exactly the right pixels that you need. There's one downside to universal game cases is they're slightly bigger than eight and a half by 11. So you're probably gonna have to do it on uh, legal, uh, which is a little bit more expensive, but you know, it's about 50 cents a page. So 50 cents added on to the already the dollar per case, you know, it's not bad. Um, and uh, I used to do through Staples online all the time, and that made things a lot easier. However, they recently changed their setup uh, for digital file submission. I don't recommend using that anymore. Every time I have made any kind of order through them, um, through digital, it's been wrong. Uh, there's been errors, it's been either too small or expanded, or the sizing is just completely out of whack. Uh, you're better off just loading it up on a USB, going down there yourself, explaining what you want. Now, sometimes you do get problems with people that are worried about like copyright infringement and stuff like that. Um, you don't have to worry about any of that, and you can explain this to them because it's fair use to arrange, you know, logos and ideas and stuff like that. As long as you're not selling it commercially, you know, you're doing it for yourself. You're just doing a quick little print. You know, it doesn't. Um, it, it's not like you're copying the game or anything and uh, you should be totally okay with that like if I were to go in there and print out like 40 of the same thing you know that might rouse a little bit of you know suspicion and ethical question because obviously I'm selling the excess and the cover project and all these things are not about that they're all free you know time and art and it's uh, it's about keeping it alive so that's going to be it for now. Uh, I'm going to leave all relevant information at the bottom of how to do this from start A to start C or whatever. And uh, don't hesitate to contact me if you need any help. And check out the Canadian Zangief website and Facebook, the Canadian Zangief. And uh, like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Cheers.